first bolt you're gonna wanna loosen is up here. This is a five millimeter. So you're gonna put your hand on the wheel and this bolt and you're gonna lift up on the wheel because the shock's gonna fall down. So here is the front bolt, it's a five millimeter. It has grease on the bolt and Loctite. What I like to do is place my bolts exactly how they came out in order. There's only two bolts on this bike, so it's not as complicated. This is the lower bolt, it has no Loctite on it, but it does have grease. This is the Fox Float X removed from the Levo. So make sure you have a clean work environment for your shock because you don't want to introduce contaminants. This is how you clean it. <sighs> Customer states he wants this volume spacer. This is third from the top, 0.6. So we come over to our chart. This is the Levo. So it has a 210 by 55 shock. Bada bing, bada boom. Now the shock's all cleaned off. I've screwed in my shock pump. This has got 235 PSI in it. So we're gonna make a note, 235 PSI. As you can see, that shock's nice and clean. Slowly let the air out of there. Not super slow, but not super fast. Okay, now I've let all the air out of the shock. I'm going to press this down, make sure it's totally vacated of air before I open the canister. Excellent thing to do here, guys, is before taking the shock apart, I stuck it back in the bike, and I'm gonna take a couple photos and make sure the orientation of everything is perfect when I go back together because the air valve Things can gouge each other, so we're gonna make sure it looks exactly like this when we put it back on the bike. What I mean by exactly like that, so we have this clevis is that way and that clevis is that way. The clevis is the hole on the end of the shock. Okay, this is the only special tool you're gonna need. This is a strap wrench. I got it at Harbor Freight. It's a piece of crap, but it works great. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna put the strap wrench on, so like that. Tighten her up, get yourself a nice rod, and we're gonna unscrew this part of the can. So this, so this portion right here, I'm gonna unscrew it. Mm. Okay, that was, took a ton of force to do that. So we're holding both this piece and the air can. You hear that pop? That thing would have went so flying. Now that we're inside of the shock, I've got a plastic tool. Push the bumper down. We gotta get this little doodad down. Okay, you see that? Got the doodad down. So whoever installed this volume spacer did it correctly. We got the opening to the left like that. So in order to get that volume spacer out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a pick, get up underneath it. Gently pull that volume spacer up. So the volume spacer comes out. Fox makes it really nice. So the Fox, it says turnover, so the Fox logo is visible. Very nice, they write that so you can't get it wrong. So we're going up, we're going up a size in volume spacers. We're going from this color to the orange color because customer is very picky and doesn't like big changes. <coughs> okay, so I'm working that volume spacer back down and I'm struggling, so don't feel bad. There it goes, heard it go down. That volume spacer will pop down You'll hear that audible pop like I just had, and it's kind of cocked over to the right, just how it was before. Now we're gonna go back together. So we gotta push as hard as I can, push that can as hard as I can and try to thread it. 
Okay. Bada bing, bada boom. So we were gonna give this just a little, oh no, I moved that. We're gonna give this can just a little tug. There's no torque spec for this. Okay, now we're gonna put a little bit of air back in the shock. Not a ton of air. Okay, let's talk about what volume spacer you should put in your bike. So basically, the Levo 210 by 55 can take any one of these spacers. I am 220 pounds. I would personally run, I would run this one, the biggest one. If you were 220 pounds, I would recommend that one, 200 pounds. And then I put the orange one inside of it, maybe if you're 190 and then accordingly down. Depends on riding style. If you're not on a Levo on another bike, I got a whole different video doing a generalization about which volume spacers to use on this shock. Basically, you're gonna take the total weight of the bike. So if you have a heavy e-bike, you're gonna need more volume reduction. And if you have an Amish bike like that, you're gonna need less volume reduction. If you're a heavy rider like me, you're gonna need more too. So me, heavy rider and e-bike, ton of volume reduction. This isn't a science. I would just uh, make a prediction, you know, like I call this the 220 pound plus rider volume spacer with an e-bike. If I was on an Amish bike, I might go for that one. So just look at your total system weight and check the comment for that video below. Okay, we're putting the shock back in. I like to start in the back. So you're lifting the wheel and you're looking for the hole. Bada bing, bada boom. So we don't want to put tension on those threads. So we're lifting the wheel up and turning. We're lifting the wheel up and turning the threads. Now this is the back one. That one goes in quite a bit easier. Six millimeter facing down. 